<laughs> live from the river. The river. With guests today on the Monday Motivation, Josiah Hartman. Josiah, give us your vital statistics here. Vital statistics? One of my vital statistics. Where are you from? Where I'm from? I'm from, uh, this is Athens, Pennsylvania. Um, almost in New York. And um, probably never heard of it. But, uh, <laughs> How long have uh, you been a youth I've pastor? I've been a youth pastor for four years. Where'd you go to um, school? Went to school at Faith Bible College. Faith Bible in Maine. College. And, uh, Faith School of Theology. Faith School of Theology it was then. It's now Faith Bible College International. Really? They changed their name. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and we have other youth pastors in our districts who are alums, like Rafe yep. Sanderson of the Faith Community. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, and uh, married? Yes, married. Uh, my wife, Danielle, and uh, we've been married for five years. And then we've got two kids. Uh, Gavin is four, and Asher is almost two. And then we're also expecting a third uh, yeah. in February. So. That's awesome. And this is one of the great northern out posts of yes. our of our district right on the New York border. Yep. I left my house at 4.30 this morning yeah. to get here a bit of a drive. for an 8 a.m. breakfast, but it's awesome, awesome mm -hmm. to spend some time with Josiah, get to know him here, his testimony, and we're in your youth center yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to talk a little bit today about isolation. Yeah. And and I plan to talk about this anyway, but as it turns out, you're the perfect guest <laughs> on the Monday Motivation because you are isolated yes. up here, right? Yeah, yeah. Before we do that, we want to give uh, just some happy birthday announcements, some housekeeping. So, happy birthday this week. We've got a couple birthdays. We want to say happy birthday to Xavier Jackson, the youth director for the Block Church in the city of Philadelphia. Turns out, one of the fastest growing urban church plants wow. in the nation, doing a great job. That's awesome. Happy birthday on Wednesday to Xavier. Yeah. And uh, this Thursday, happy birthday to Michael Abreu. Michael Abreu. Abreu. Yeah. Abreu. Uh, yeah. yeah. Michael Abreu. Happy birthday to you as well on Thursday. Yeah. And Michael and his uh, wife are the youth pastor, volunteer youth pastors at Capital City Church Capital in Harrisburg. Capital City. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Friday, Kurt Mary Surwell. Yes. One of those husband-wife combined names, actually oh, okay. Mary's birthday on Friday. Happy well, birthday. Nice. Matt Robinson, Lansdale outside of Philadelphia. Happy birthday on Friday. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday is Trish Boring's birthday. That's right. Yeah, no, looking forward yeah. To that. Trish Boring, Western PA. Happy birthday. And we have some announcements. Happy birthday to you. Yes, first of all, uh, winter retreat registration is now open. Woohoo! Yes. Winter retreat. So if you're taking some kids to winter retreat, now's the time to start getting in. Yeah, and getting your registration in. So Great speakers, Timothy McCain. Yes, first weekend. Uh, Ali Vasquez, one of the uh, just amazing uh, evangelists. She's from the West Coast. Awesome. Uh, for that, she's from our district originally. Mm -hmm. And Peter uh, Reeves, who's from Ben Salem, outside of Philadelphia. Now he's a youth pastor in Michigan. Also great. great evangelist. He'll be with us third weekend. So it's going to be amazing. And the Philly Dream Center Speed Delight Experience is coming December twelfth and thirteenth. Registration for this is up. You can find it on our website. We'll have a link in the comments also. And this is a this is a big deal. This is the only thing different we've done to help promote Speed the Light yeah. in three decades. Huh? I kid you not. No tour this year for Speed the Light. Instead, we're doing a real-life experience. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia, one of the heroin capitals of our nation. It's no joke. It's crazy down there. Philly Dream Center, just a block or two from the epicenter mm -hmm. of this great challenge in the city of Philadelphia. They have a U.S. mission. They're U.S. missionaries, Dave and Sharif Dominguez. They have a, the Dream Center is a is a U.S. missions account uh, kind of a thing. So they have a an, a, a project application in for yeah. Speed the Light for a van, and we want to fund that. But also, it's a great opportunity to see what they're doing at the Dream Center. And they are always taking AIM teams, short-term missions yep. teams. So great opportunity just to get there. It's free. Airbnb housing, nice places. Awesome. Uh, food's provided on overnight in Philadelphia. Grab some cheese steaks, drink some good coffee. We're going to have a great time. So nice. check that out. So isolation, kind of a big deal. Yeah. It yeah. is the third or fourth cause for why people leave youth ministry mm -hmm. why they leave youth ministry why they leave the ministry completely is the idea of isolation i was right. at a conference last week uh, it was uh, it, uh the all the major players who are trying to reach schools in our nation middle schools and high schools were together at this conference so the head of youth for christ campus life mm -hmm. was there the head of campus crusade was there wow. the heads of young life and fca were there the head of the assemblies of god 
was there as far as youth ministry and Youth Alive goes, and we had a team of missionaries, and I was there as well because of my roles uh, that I've played with Youth Alive in the past. Right. And uh, we talk, you know, when you get all these people together, you know, who all have their own kind of pretty big ministries yeah. and kingdoms, yeah. you just think they don't really need to come to the table. Mm -hmm. But they do, yeah. Because there's value in not being isolated, absolutely, in your ministry. And we were talking earlier, just being up here, you're probably an hour and a half from the closest mm -hmm. other full-time youth pastor yeah. in our fellowship, right? What do you do here, Josiah, to keep from falling into isolation? Um, well, one thing I've done is just connecting with other youth pastors in the area. There's one other youth pastor at a, in a Baptist church um, in our area that I really have connected with well. Mm. Um, and, and we've been able to work in spite of some of the, the minor doctrinal differences as far as um, gifts of the Spirit and things like that. We've still been able to work together to, to reach the youth of our area. And uh, he's been a good friend to me and uh, connecting with him. And yeah. so that's been really good. And those are, so you mentioned, I mean, just talking about that relationship, there's a couple keys mm -hmm. to successful partnership from not to not being isolated, to having a successful networking experience, a successful partnership. Yeah. Several keys that I heard in what you're saying. And uh, there was a presentation that I heard uh, last week. The speaker is like the president of Campus Crusade. Uh, I can't remember his name right now, but he's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Uh, President of Campus Crusade, he's a doctor. His mm -hmm. degrees are like from Harvard Business School, oh, well. and, and okay. he doesn't have a ministry degree. He's like, right. he's way better than we are. So, <laughs> so keys to successful partnership, number one, common vision. Common vision. Common vision. Yeah, what do we have important. in common with other churches, mm -hmm. other, even as some of God leaders? Yeah. Well, at, at a minimum, we have the gospel. Yes. And within the fellowship, absolutely. we have the spirit. And that's and, and th those are huge pieces. Number two, a commitment to action. Mm -hmm. It's really important if you're going to have good networking and, is and and not be in isolation, but have good networking and partnership. It's not enough just to get together. Mm -hmm. Some people really draw energy just from being together, but most people need to know there's going to be some type of productive result. Yeah of being mm -hmm. together, especially when you're committed to the mission, you're committed to the gospel. Yep. So where does us getting together end? Right. So a commitment to action, common vision, commitment to action. Number three, complementary contributions. You bring something mm -hmm. to the table, I bring something to yeah. the table. We mutually benefit from that. Right. Number four, trust and relational chemistry. Mm -hmm. Of course, kind of like you, you only want to do ministry with people you trust, <laughs> right? Kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. But if you don't trust the people you're with, you're mm -hmm. around. And trust, you know, um, there's a saying, relationships move at the speed of trust. Right. Relationships move at the speed of yeah, trust. That's good. And that's one of the reasons I'm up here meeting with you mm -hmm. is I heard your testimony this morning. We yeah. sat, crazy, just crazy story. Oh, yeah. God's Amazing story. I loved hearing it. And that's one of the things we're doing in our youth ministry. Let's build trust and relationship mm -hmm. amongst our youth pastors because our productivity as a network moves at the speed of trust yeah. with one another. And then number five, unselfish humility. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it takes humility to come to the table and say, I need to meet with someone else. Mm -hmm. And now when it came to all those campus groups meeting together, they all have large footprints on campuses. As far as the Assemblies of God go, it was said multiple times from the stage by these parachurch groups that the Assemblies of God is the top denomination mm -hmm. for reaching schools. They want every church denomination to model what the Assemblies of God is. That's like, that's super touching. Yeah, that is. But it also says, like, we don't have to come to the table if we don't want to. Mm -hmm. But humility says we have a mission, right? reaching every student in every school. That's part of our mission when it comes to the campus and the Assemblies of God. Mm -hmm. That's impossible yeah. for us to do. We, un, in humility, have to come to the table and say right. we need one another. Sure. Even this town of Athens, this is a very Mediterranean area, mm -hmm. by the way. <laughs> Athens, PA, right down the road, Milan. I was in Milan this yep. morning. Not as cosmopolitan maybe as Europe. Yeah. But, you know, it takes a lot. Even in towns like Athens that aren't like Philadelphia per mm -hmm. se, we still have to say, well, there's a Baptist guy over here. Yep. We need to work together yeah. to accomplish the mission. Yeah, and it's been really good working with them. We've been able to plan some youth events together, held a couple, we've held some conferences and stuff with focus on the gospel and salvation. And then uh, and then we both are just there available. And if kids want to come to either one of our youth groups, we just make it open and let people know what's available. Yeah. And, and it's been really good. So it's fantastic. We're able to reach some of the schools. and so. Fantastic. It's amazing. Uh, we want to say two things before we go. Number one, congratulations. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Josiah, yes. two kids, third one on the yes. way. Be born in mm -hmm. February. February 15th. Silas. Silas. Yep. Silas Hartman. Amazing. Mm -hmm. 
going to be great. And we want to say, lastly, we've had a special guest with us on this uh, Monday Motivation. That's Bubbles. That is Bubbles, the mascot <laughs> for the river. Yeah, he's really checking us out here. Yeah, he He's is. really giving us a show. Yeah. Look at that. Don't attack Bubbles. <laughs> Josiah, why don't you uh, pray for us? And uh, let's just pray for everybody. Maybe they're feeling isolated mm -hmm. or discouraged. Let's just pray that we find a way out of that. Absolutely. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that, uh, that uh, you are um, the God with us, Emmanuel. Lord, that no matter where we are, you are with us and you are mm -hmm. helper. But I also thank you that you've created us to be a body, to have fellowship and to encourage and build one another up. And so, Lord, I just pray for any of those that, that may be out there watching this right now or even watching it in the future that uh, are experiencing isolation in their ministry, wherever they may be. And God, I pray that you would be their comfort, but also that you would give them creative wisdom to be able to find and know those that are around them that they can connect with and fellowship with to be able to build those lasting relational ties that will help strengthen them and combine with them in a com common vision and goal to be able to continue to ex advance the, the, the goodness of your kingdom in their areas. I pray that you would just continue to pour out your wisdom and uh, that you would bring those relational ties together and continue to help us to develop in becoming one as a church, Lord mm -hmm. Jesus, as your, as your final prayer before you went to the cross, that the church would, 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 would be unified and would come together in that mm -hmm. one final purpose. We just ask that you would continue to bring that unity among us, that we would draw together and, and recognize our need and, and, and do, take, take action to be able to, to rectify that, that we would work together and uh, be able to, to break through those bonds of isolation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Actionables out of today. If you're feeling isolated, you need to connect. Get with your sectional rep. Contact yeah. other Assemblies of God youth pastors in your section. If you don't have that, connect with yeah. another youth pastor, Definitely. even if they're Baptist, in your area. <laughs> have a great Monday, everybody. Yeah.